In this screencast, we'll uh, continue our treatment of uh, the programming language L, um, a computational formalism developed in the second chapter of Computability Complexity and Languages by Martin Davis, Ron Segal, and Elaine Wayoker. And um, we'll start with program states. Uh, let's um, suppose that uh, we have uh, an L program, and you can watch our previous screencasts on this channel about um, programming language L. So we'll assume from now on that um, this program P1 is an L program um, written in uh, the programming language L. So it consists of um, um, a bunch of uh, instructions, right? It's a sequence of instructions, uh, possibly empty. And um, uh, well, we want to know uh, what happens to this program um, as it starts being executed in our imaginary uh, computer that can um, uh, execute four primitive instructions. Well, that's a chip uh, that can execute. So the state of the program um, um, is um, uh, is a set of equations. Uh, uh, of this form, v1 equals m, uh, v2 equals l, v3 equals uh, k, um, and so forth. So, um, uh, so, um, and where m, l, and k are uh, natural numbers. And uh, every uh, variable uh, in the state, right, which is on the left side of an equation, uh, is a uh, variable and uh, um, right, so it has to be it has to be a legal variable name. Uh, so um, that's uh, that's the state of um, of the program. And uh, to be a legal state, um, um, right, of an L program, uh, that state, that set of equations, must have mm, exactly one. Um, equation equation for every every uh, V in um, uh, this program right in this program P or P1 okay forgot the subscript um, Right, so so um, if uh, v is mentioned in the text of the program, then the legal state must have uh, exactly one equation for uh, every variable uh, in p. If uh, say some variable v prime is not uh, in p, uh, uh, then well, it it may or may not be uh, in uh, uh, in the state. Right, so we may have some variables uh, in uh, in the state that are not mentioned in the state of the program, and uh, uh, so maybe we can store some um, uh, information about the program that are not directly available to the program. But um, those variables are essentially uh, for our information uh, only. Uh, but we must have exactly one equation for every variable in the program. So let's talk about uh, program snapshots, also known as instantaneous uh, descriptions. So suppose that um, so this program P1, the L program, has um, n uh, uh, instructions. N is a natural number. So the snapshot, well, a snapshot um, of um, um, the program, this this um, program P one is um, a tuple i sigma where um, i is the number of the instruction um, to be executed and it has to be um, less than or equal to n plus 1 and greater than or equal to um, 1. Well, we start counting instructions from uh, 1 
and um, sigma is a uh, a legal state of um, uh, p1 so it has exactly one equation for every variable in uh, in p1 right and i is the number of the instruction uh, that is about to be executed okay let me um, grab some space So let's suppose that um, uh, this program P1 uh, has um, uh, m input uh, variables. Then um, m inputs, right? Then um, this uh, snapshot, right, where i is 1, and then we have the equation for every input variable x1 is equal to the value uh, x1 and all the way up to uh, xm and y is equal to uh, uh, zero and then uh, for every other variable mentioned in the program we're going to have an equation v is equal uh, to zero right so this snapshot is called uh, the initial snapshot uh, this is uh, this is the initial snapshot from which we um, start the execution of um, the program uh, p1 so the first uh, instruction is about to be executed and all of the input variables are specified the value of y is zero and every other variable value of every other variable is zero and then there's another type of snapshot n plus one so n plus one uh, i is equal to n, 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 n plus one and then for some state sigma this is the terminal snapshot because the instruction to be executed is n plus one 